What's up guys? Today we're going to be doing the video on how to make dimple dyed heel plates for your car, be it a drift car, show car, track car, whatever. We're going to be create, showing you how to create these, going through the process that I used to make this. So first things first, we're going to go over what you need to do this. So you're going to need aluminum. Um, I used aluminum a little bit on the thin side. That stuff's probably as less than an eighth of an inch. I would probably recommend the round eighth of an inch. That's probably... Um, 16 maybe 14 gauge aluminum um but i would recommend a little bit thinner especially depending on how much like mine is almost going to kind of rest on the floor so it doesn't need to be that thick because most of the support is actually going to be right to the floor it's just going to be sitting on top of it um next thing you're going to need is your dimple die and this is the most important selecting the size of this clearly you don't want like a three inch dimple die um this is inch and a quarter i'd recommend staying between an inch inch and three quarter and then um you're gonna need the whole salt to match and the reason you don't want to go too big is because you won't have that many and you don't want to go too small you want to you know you want to be aesthetically appealing as well um i went with inch and a quarter seemed to make the most sense to me when i laid it out uh you could always go inch and a half inch wouldn't really matter but you're gonna need a whole salt to match now uh, you're also gonna need a chuck if you already have a chuck um just so happens i have a lot of whole saws we have chucks so um get a matching hole saw this is inch and a quarter and it is um a milwaukee hole dozer milwaukee um hole saws are supposed to be really really good when i looked up a couple years ago a lot of inf information about tube notching this was the go-to and um i love these so i suggest you pick those up lowe's does not carry milwaukee but i ordered mine on amazon for like a couple bucks it was super cheap so you're gonna need those and you're gonna need a drill and the last thing you're gonna need is a press now i actually recommend a drill press more than a drill it makes it a little bit easier but um we'll get to that so the the press you're gonna need because these style that i use or that i own here this dimple die i only have one size right now but this is about 30 or 40 dollars on amazon and uh it's supposed to be able to do eighth inch thick steel i don't really doubt that but i'm only doing aluminum so i don't really care if it was a cheap one this requires a press to sandwich these two this thin of aluminum you could probably get away with like i don't know vice honestly but uh, it'd be hard to get that into a vise. So you're gonna need a press to do this, or you're gonna need to buy specific um, punches. I know Speedway Motor sells them that use a bolt to sandwich it uh, and a nut so that way you don't need it. But we're gonna hop right in. I'm gonna walk you through the steps that I took to create these. All right, guys, so basically, um, you're gonna, and we're gonna have to take a few measurements to figure out how to make our base plates or our, our, our heel plates fit within the parameters of the stock floor pan. Now, luckily on the Ford Mustang, these floor pans are actually identical, which uh, I haven't looked at like a whole bunch of car floor pans, but uh, I knew to like the 240 floor pan, they aren't identical um, because of the catalytic converter hump on the driver's side. But these are identical, so you only have to make one template, or um, one template. But um, basically, you're gonna have to measure out everything that you can while you're here. And uh, now, if you notice, this stuff isn't exactly going to be square. So we're going to have to go off this edge back here, which is the factory edge of the car for the rocker panel and the seat, um, the seat rail right there, because that's actually a 45 degree angle. So we're going to base all of our measurements off those two. So you're going to need a pen and paper, and you're going to need to take quite a few measurements. And uh, if you know a lot about measuring, which may sound stupid, but uh, measuring and marking stuff out uh, is a lot of knowledge that you can learn. So if you know about it, it'll be super easy. But basically, so this is a box, a hump in the floor. We're going to mark this out. So you're going to take this, measure out, let's say uh, 11 and a half. We're going to say 12 inches or 11 and three quarter. So you're going to write that down for 11 and three quarter. So this is from the driver's side, but this is how I do it. I draw out the shape and then I mark out each side measurement. So 11 and 3 quarter was that side of the box. Come in here with this once again. I'm going to say about four and a half for that side of the box. So now we have this bump in marked out. So you're going to measure across the back here as well. And uh, about 14 and a half. So you put that down. 
14 and a half. Now all of our measurements from the front, from the back, to the front are going to go off this edge. Because this is what we're measuring off of for these. And all of our measurements from this way to this way are going to go off, well, it'll be this side, because it was made for the driver's side, but the straight edge there, which is the rocker panel. So we're going to measure out from the rocker panel in two different spots, because this box is not symmetrical. So you're going to come in here, measure this out, say 14, about 14 and a half, 14 and a quarter. So you mark that down just so you can make sure that that section will fit because that box is a little bit tapered. So now we have to do this section forward, right? And this section forward. So we're going to decide about where we want our heel plate to end, which is completely up to you. In my case, I want them to end a little bit in front of the roll cage tube. It's about 23 inches. Now, I have a unique case here where my roll cage lands right here and the heel plate is going to extend past it. So we're going to have to notch it for that. So we're going to come in here. It's about two inches. You don't want to make anything too super tight, but don't make it too loose either. You can always remove material. So boom, we got this notch. It's going to be two inches in. Measure up. And we're about three inches up. So this is the, that notch there two inches over, three inches deep, which leaves 20 inches from the back of our seat rail brace to the front right here where the roll cage comes down. Now, um, all I did on the other side was measure here, 16 inches across that front edge. 18 and a half was the distance between the transmission tunnel here and the rocker box there. 14 and a half was between this hump. So that way we did that. Next, you're gonna draw all of this stuff out onto a template. All right, so I think you guys can see in there, this is my storage for my poster board. But this is what I like to use for templates. Now, this does cost money. It's a couple dollars at Walmart. I think it's like four or five bucks for a few sheets of it. Get the heaviest stuff you can, and it's the best for making templates. You do not wanna use cardboard that comes in boxes and stuff like that, because it's corrugated, and the corrugations actually make it harder to cut um, on like angles and stuff, and it kind of messes up your perfect lines, which is why I suggest the cardstock, and the cardstock also conforms better if you're doing something where you have to make it conform. So you're gonna get some of that, or whatever you decide to make your template on, and draw your measurements out that you took. Basically take this, blow it up true to scale, and create your heel plate out of that. And once you do that and cut it out, you'll have one of these. So. Apparently mine got a little bit banged up between when I made it and now, but take this, which should, if all your measurements were marked and cut correctly, fit right where it's supposed to. Clearly mine has also been used to paint on a few times, but boom. And that's pretty much how mine is supposed to sit. Now, you have to also think about how you're gonna mount this and if you're gonna have a raised one, which you're gonna have to bend all the edges for, but if you're gonna have a raised one, you're gonna have to add length to each corner of what you want the raise after you bend it so it can set up off the floor. Now, the way I'm doing mine is, it's screwing basically straight to the floor at most points, but in the back, it's gonna be screwing to the seat brace. And the seat brace, um, since that's bent, I added about an inch or so, and I bent it up like that to screw to. So that's how I did mine. Now, after you have all that stuff marked out, and it, is fit. Make sure you take as much time on the template as possible. Trim it for every little nuisance you can think of before you transfer it to metal. So I'm gonna take this, trace this onto my material, and then um, this may sound a little bit weird to a lot of people, but I like to use a circular saw to cut this. Um, this is actually a Harbor Freight blade. Don't use an expensive one, especially if you don't know what you're doing, because you will fuck them up. Carbide blade, the most teeth you can get um, this actually cuts it pretty good. They do make metal blades. They're a lot more expensive. And I'm not going to say they don't work, but I'm leery of how they work because I've never used one. For aluminum, especially that thin stuff, that stuff works great. So that's what we're going to do now. All right, guys. So I did not record me cutting the piece, mostly because it's just cutting um, and it's freezing cold outside. It's really, really windy right now. And uh, I have to cut this stuff outside because I don't like getting the metal shavings in the shop. And the heat's on in here, and the metal will not fit in here right now without the door being open. So I did cut the piece, 
as you can see, I kind of wire wheeled it. This stuff has paper, so a little bit right there, all over it because this was purchased from a scrap yard. I got two 4x12 sheets for $100. That's extremely cheap for aluminum sheeting first off, and it's worth the hassle of having to clean up every piece. But you gotta make sure you do it before you start this process. Because if you wait like I did, which as you can see, this one still has paper on it. This one's gonna be a little bit harder to clean up. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna finish them yet. We will figure that out eventually. I'm probably gonna brush them and clear coat them. But, um, I did clean it off and we're ready to start on the next part which is pretty much cleaning up all the edges. I just use a flap disc. Uh, this is pretty easy stuff. It does lit up the flap disc a little bit so I try and keep the same one in there. And then we're going to mark this out and cut it but only or you know cut the holes but only after we check the fitment to make sure we're good. <laughs> Right, guys so we fully cleaned up our piece and as you can see it's looking a lot better nice rounded edges um, I just recently started doing that really with the rounding the edges it just makes everything look a lot more finished especially because generally when you're cutting things by hand you don't get perfectly square edges and I feel like rounding them just makes it look a lot cooler so um, the tip I would give you guys for that is I, I usually just freehand them um, what I normally do is I just take the, like, I use the flap disc usually, go straight in at like a 45. So if you were going to do this one here, you know, let me see if I can get the focus on the metal. Go in at a 45 straight down, perpendicular to the point. Go down a little bit, then come out after you get it as deep as you want for how big of a bend you want. And then just kind of round off the two smaller corners. Another method I like to use is just find something round in your shop and trace it onto the edge. Works great and it gives you consistent edges. Then you just go back with the flap disc and shape it. So that's one of my favorites to do. Um, since I'm going to be bending my plate, the next step will be bending this. So I'm going to put this in the brake. My brake, um, so Harbor Freight brake is $50 after the 20% off coupon, a 30 inch brake. Um, it can bend this aluminum. Uh, the problem is it likes to break it, which is just a problem with this aluminum. I've used it before. It loves breaking when you bend it to 90 degrees. So we have to use heat. Not a big deal. Just hit it up with a propane torch and it'll be good. All right, guys. So what I do when I'm going to be bending something on this brake, and like I said, this aluminum doesn't really like to cooperate too much without a good bit of heat in it. So I simply lay the stuff out like this and I'm just going to heat up right where the bend's going to be which is actually just here to here this middle section shouldn't be getting bent at all Now if you guys are unaware of how this harbor freight press works you have to lay this on top and then clamp it. And you do have to buy your own clamp. So if you buy one of these presses, pick up a couple of cheap C clamps at Harbor Freight. Um, I'm not really gonna go through, or the brake rather, but I'm not gonna go through the process of bending this stuff because it is a little bit tricky and you're gonna have to experiment with your material on your own to figure out how much of a gap you should leave for, for the room and the bend and all that stuff. And uh, if you buy a little brake like this, it's actually defined in the user manual you know, like a guide on, like a, you know, a pretty basic guide on what kind of baseline to start with. But personally, I suggest experimenting on a scrap piece before you go out and waste a big piece like this because, you know, you don't want to be wasting too much material. That's more rad parts you could be making. Now after I have it clipped, I'm gonna do a little bit more heat because now it's lost some. All right, so once you have it heated, if that's what you have to do, 
you're going to bend it. Now make sure you double, triple, quadruple check your orientation and that your seat clamps are tight. You want to make sure you bend this the right direction because if you bend it the wrong way, uh, it's not going to fit where you want it. And we're not going to go full 90 because these heel plates do not require a full 90. I'm just going to eyeball it and then we're going to double check it in the car. All right, guys, so I don't want to toot my own horn, but it seems that all of our prep work on this piece has paid off perfect. I actually got that angle pretty much perfect the first try. That's where I'm going to put rib nuts to screw into there and there. It's probably going to be a rib nut here, here, maybe there, and probably one there as well, just to suck all this down. But now we have to do the fun part and the cool part of dimple dyeing all this. Now, let me tell you. Before you start this, understand that there will be uh, <coughs> a long amount of time spent on the drill press, drilling every single hole, and a long amount of time. I have a hand pump press, so it takes a while. Pumping the press up and dimpling each and every one. It's gonna take a while, but I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. All right, guys, so this next part is one of the most draining parts of doing this, is marking out all the holes for the drill or the drill press. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the first time I did this, I literally got a massive headache drawing this out. I probably will again, but um, I'm gonna show you anyway. So, I know that from here to here and here to here is 14 inches. Um, that's just about what it ended up. So, um, what I'm gonna do is, I'm using inch and a quarter, leaving a barrier for the bevel of the dimple, and then the gap between them, I've decided to go three inches on center. So basically, I'm going to show you on the back side of this. You have the circle that is going to be the, you know, this is going to be gone. But then you have the bevel of the dimple. So this could be a quarter inch or so extra on top of the size of this hole that the, the bevel of the dimple is going to take up. Then you're going to want to space these out evenly, of course. You know, a nice even spacing. So I decided three inches on center. The hole for that dimple die is inch and a quarter, which leaves you with three quarters of an inch, three eighths on each side, you know, to be safe. Or no, more than three eighths, sorry, I'm off. But there is a good buffer, so back to what I was saying. This is 14 inches. We're gonna go three inches on center. Now the easiest way to do this is say, we're gonna use a 12 inch section, which is uh, three, or four, di four dimples wide, four three inch sections. Now, the difference between 12 and 14 is going to be two inches. We're gonna split those inches between each edge to keep the main row of dimples centered. So we're gonna go here, mark one in one inch, and then go to this side and do the same exact thing, mark in one inch. Now in between here, we've created a 12 inch gap to base our measurements off of. Now, we have to go up here. Well, yeah, first let me double check something, just to be certain. A little bit different, but no big deal. Um, here's what I'm gonna do. Mark in an inch again. Go off this here. And I'm gonna draw the line up. That is our one inch border that we just created based on the three inches on center for a 12 inch span and the one inch border. Like I said, this is the tricky part. You have to get this perfect. So next thing we're gonna do is measure. You can actually do a couple measurements at once. Line it up here. Make sure everything's nice and even. And go uh, three inches, six inches, and nine inches. Now what I would suggest is going back and double checking, but each and every one of those things that we just created should be three inches between the lines. Perfect. Now we're gonna go up from the bottom edge and do the same exact thing. Three, six, nine, and then the 12. On both sides, same exact thing. So three, six, nine, the 12. Now you have three inches up this way, three inches over this way. Now I'm gonna show you 
you're gonna need a straight edge for this next part. I know this seems like a lot of talking, almost four minutes now, but this is the most critical part um, to get your dimples evenly spaced and get you looking hot boy. So you're gonna line this up between the two marks you made and run that across. Boom, Th four three inch on center squares. Now we're gonna go up with the same exact uh, premise. And I'm gonna measure out this from this side here. From our line, three, six, nine, and then 12 is the end. Take your straight edge. Make sure you get these marks as correct and as straight as possible because that is what's going to determine how correct and straight your dimples come out. Now, you have this grid, you're going to just continue up three inches this way, three inches this way until this entire thing is covered in three inch square squares. All right guys, so now that you have this grid completed, you have to make all these have center marks. Now basically, uh, the premise of doing this is, this is the, in the center of each of these is where the hole and the dimple is gonna be. Now clearly these ones on the edges, this area that are not completely three inches square and this entire front edge aren't gonna get dimples. Um, that's just how it works. If you wanted to, you can always go back and square these up so they're the same size. These are actually about the same. But here's what I like to do. You could always um, have measured this slightly differently to put one and a half inch centers on each of these and then do that the other way as well. What I like to do, personally that method, I usually butcher. So I like to do the X's. So what I mean is, you're gonna go here, and you can do a few squares at once in one direction, and cross the edge of each and every one. Boom. Now you can go back this way. Boom. And um, you're just gonna keep going up is, is, is every square has to become an X, essentially. And you'll see what I mean when I'm done. All right guys, so essentially this is the end product that you want. You want to have an X in every single square and what you're gonna do is center punch the center of every single X. Now, if you're using a drill press and a soft material like this aluminum, you can likely get away without center punching it because the drill press, as long as you know, like I said, using a soft material and you're really careful, you can usually get them pretty centered. If you're using a hand drill, absolutely center punch every single one. Um, be careful with the material this thin because when you center punch it, you can actually really dimple it, especially if you're on a soft surface. So I'm going to go through and center punch it all, and then we're going to go on the drill press with our hole saw and hole saw every single one of these holes um, on the panel. All right, guys, so I'm sorry there's a speaker right next to where my camera's at, but what we're going to do is drill every single one of these holes, and like I said, it's going to be a pretty lengthy process. Um, I do suggest, like I said, be safe, especially with aluminum. Wear some gloves. Uh, you never know when you're going to encounter a sharp edge or a little one of these guys is going to fly off and cut you up. So, um, yeah. So we're going to let it rip and see uh, how well it goes. So as you can see, we got all the holes drilled except for these three. The reason being, um, I can't fit them in the drill press. 
So those three are gonna get done by hand. We'll throw this in the drill, drill theirs. Then I'm gonna clean them up with a flap disc just lightly, give rid of the burr on the edge, maybe a little bit of file work. And then I'm gonna show you guys how you press these, which is super simple, but I'm gonna walk you through it. Alright guys, so we got all the holes cleaned up and all the big burrs off. The rest just come off with your finger, which is stuck on there. So we're ready to dimple this. Now, uh, if you're going to take notice on my other dimple dyed heel plate, all these dimples go down. The first two rows are inverted, so they're actually dimpled up. And what this does, the whole purpose of this is actually gives you a nice little sharp edge so your heel of your shoe can hit this. And uh, hopefully be a little bit uh, less slippery when you're in the pedals so that way your feet don't slip around because clearly this rounded edge isn't going to provide you any grip not that it's meant to this one is meant to give you grip so the first two rows are inverted for that purpose now the passenger side clearly doesn't have pedals to worry about and for that reason I'm going to dimple those regularly all downward um, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now so you're going to take your dimple die. It should have a little bit of oil on it, especially if you're doing steel or something thick. And um, you can see here on the taper, make sure you guys can see that, yeah. On the taper, you want that to be pointing down to make the dimple go down. Uh, and if you were going to dimple it upwards, like the first two rows on the other plate, you'd sit it like this. So um, this way, you're going to drop this in here. Should be a pretty snug fit. Put that guy there. Make those two. Slide it into your press. Pump this down, which takes forever. And once you're here, you can take your handle. And press it. Now I like to get a little good bit of force on there. Because... You have to dimple the material, and then the flat part on the die is going to straighten that material back out. So if we look at that now, let me double check on the camera here. You got a nice, perfectly dimpled hole, and you can see the ring from the oil on the die. You want to make sure you press all the way into that flat spot so the material flattens back out. Otherwise, it'll be cupped from the indent from that. So then you're just going to do that on every single one of these holes, which takes... An extremely long amount of time so you guys will not see every single hole being done all right so there's the heel plates all done clearly they'll be screwed down like that and uh like i said almost sitting on the floor in a couple spots but really done now all dimpled and uh the back sides as well i'm not going to show you guys how to mount them because mounting them is clearly based on your design and your application. You guys will see them mounted later on though in this car, same with the driver's side. And there you can kind of see the inverted ones with the pedals. So that's it for this video guys. That's how you make dimple dot heel plates. And uh, I also welded my roof on, I didn't show this. I got this welded on. I'm gonna put my back window in this week and seam seal this, prime that. This is a sneak peek for the dash. The dash isn't in because I welded the roof on, so take this as your sneak peek for that. Um, we're getting there though. Next video you guys will see will probably be the interior getting put back together. And we're gonna have to make a passenger seat bracket soon. And a couple other little things have to be done. So uh, that's it. I'm gonna finish these now. Probably just brush them and clear coat them. Clean up the black sharpie marks and stuff. But uh, I'll see you guys next time.